This place is called Fesio de Artico. It's Darktico, it doesn't mean it's from the Arctic, it, uh, because it's cold. It was the name of somebody, and it's located on the Riviera del Brenta. Now, the Riviera del Brenta is the name given to a, a river. Uh, it's more of a canal, really, that stretches from Padua to Venice. And the, uh, the river is quite well noted for the palaces which were built from the 16th, 17th centuries. Uh, which are really quite magnificent and what I'm going to do today is I'm going to walk along the canal and we can see it there and um, I parked in this car park it's nice and quiet and uh, I was in another location a little bit earlier which I'm now going to show you and it's a lovely day 24th of March 2016 I'm shy. Ciao, ciao, ciao. As can be seen, the building in front is the town hall, and this is where I initially parked. Wasn't expecting to stay here so long, and I parked next to the town hall. You can see on my site the photographs, because the photographs came out really well. But what I'm now going to do is I'm going to walk behind the town hall to put them out. The first day I came here, I parked my vehicle in this spot where the Vito is and the Jeep is today. Long spot, uh, suitable for a longer vehicle. But I went out for a walk and I discovered the parking place where I'm at now, which is a lot quieter. But uh, the photographs I took here, I thought, are absolutely amazing. Uh, well, considering I took them. And today is market day apparently because there's one stall there and we've got four stalls there uh, selling meat and uh, sausages uh, next is a vegetable so I've got some chard and some spinach then there's some cheese and some honey and there's another stand down there we have this church tower bell tower it's not actually attached to the church it was bang next to it and the bell tower I thought was what 15th century I might be wrong War Memorial, lots of names as always. Now this place there has a population around 7,000. I think around the Second World War had a population of 4,000 to 5,000. The population has actually grown quite considerably in the last uh, 15 years, which is, which is unusual. Uh, this place is noted for shoe production, particularly women's shoes. And I'm going to walk down here. And this rather reminded me of the Norfolk Broads. And you'll soon see why. Velvet. Now to make a few observations about this place and how I actually came to be here was that I left Padua without a clear indication of the direction I wanted to travel in. Point those things out there. That's for capturing mice and rats. Oh, and there's a lizard. Two lizards. itself. So I just uh, I was driving down the main road, not the motorway towards Venice and I saw these palaces and uh, there's the uh, Villa Pisani and I thought, I thought to myself I have to stop and to have a better look at these places. So I found the, the car park at the town hall, stuck, it, was, it was now dark, stuck the car in there and went out for my walk 
I found a better place for my van. Moved it there. And that was on Monday evening. And it's now Thursday. And I want to find out more about the area. So on the left we have the main street in Piesso d'Artico. Now yesterday I started off walking in the same direction, but along the road, and as there's no pavement, it's not all that pleasant. Also, there was a strong wind. But as can be seen, today is lovely. Now, my first impressions of being here were waking up. I had uh, not only the cockles in the morning, the cooing of the pigeons and the singing of the birds, which obviously it's the beginning of spring and at this time of the year it stands out more than it does at other times of the year. The source of the Brenta is around 165 kilometers from here, following the course of the river Sonia Bassano della Grappa. And in the early modern period, so say 16th, 17th, 18th centuries, uh, wealthy Venetians built the palaces, and this river was seen really as an extension of the Grand Canal which goes through the centre of Venice. And I'm sure the reason for building the residences was due to the unhealthy climate around Venice. How many people say that Venice smells I don't think it smells that badly, but uh, I'll bow down to the what appears to be the majority opinion. And I'm sure it was even worse then than it is today. And so to come to places along this river in the summer must have been particularly nice. Around many of the palaces, farms grew up, and this was seen as a way of reinvesting money that the merchants had earned through trading in Venice. Now, if you were to come here with your motorhome and park somewhere like I parked, um, you have the possibility of getting into Venice by bus. Now, the bus takes just under an hour from here. Now, Anyway, I shall be going to Venice the day after tomorrow because tomorrow we have a rain forecast. But on Saturday there should be similar weather to what we have today, I hope. Now on the left there is a building which is, I suspect, one of the, of the palaces because I, I saw the main entrance from the road yesterday and we'll have a quick look at it through here today. I don't know when it was built, only at the once. There was a building I thought looked new uh, for, to, to, in the direction of Padua and it turned out it was 17th century. I'm unable to say when that one there was built but look at the gardens aren't they that's wonderful and this is a private residence now many of the palaces are still private residences others have been turned into museums but you know they've got so many of them you can't turn them all into museums
two lions. Now the lion is the symbol of Venice, although in a different pose. Unfortunately, I can see the road is not going to continue alongside the canal. Hopefully I'll come back to it. But what I'm going to do now is turn around and I'll have a look at the view I've just walked up. Cycle track continues around here. Two days ago I went out for a walk and I was thinking it oh, this is brilliant for the uh, for cycling. But yesterday there was so much wind. And today I thought I felt a bit of wind, so I thought I'd walk. And for this there's a new obsession I've got related to my smartphone which measures how many steps I do. And I've got it in my mind, I've got to do 10,000 steps a day. And uh, yesterday I had a couple of runs around the parking area. I ran it because it felt silly walking. And just to make sure I got it over 10,000. And in my case, it's about 6.6 .6 kilometers. I'd like to say a few words about motorhome camping. Where can you actually stop and uh, sleep? Now, the word camping is an unfortunate word, which, when I use it, I would tend to think of camping as being somewhere where you stop, you stay a longer period of time, you get the awning out, and you might get your, your seats and tables and chairs out, and all the rest of it. You make it clear that you're actually there. Whereas, to actually stop somewhere and stay the night um, is a word which is becoming increasingly used, is sleepy spot. Where you're not actually extending your, board, your borders outside those of your camper van. And so, um, if we accept the second definition, what's it like to actually stop in Italy for the night? And the answer is, I think it's very easy. Uh, there are proper places all over the place. Now, normally, you're allowed two or three nights, but my experience is that nobody could care less. Obviously, if it was a bit of a push, then it would make a difference. Uh, in a car park like I am now, as long as you don't make a mess, I don't think the, the locals could care less too much. Now, yesterday there was a bit of a squash in the car park, and I was a bit concerned. I did offer to actually move my vehicle. Uh, but I said, no, don't worry about it, and all the rest of it. The reason for this is there's a school nearby, so it collecting times for the kids, then people will park the cars there and they come and pick the kids up. Now, the reason I brought this subject up now was because I compared it in my mind to the situation on the Norfolk Broads and there you just cannot find anywhere to park at all. It's it's really difficult. Uh, most of my journeys around the Norfolk board roads in a camper van were done outside of the season. Uh, mainly late winter, early spring. But I've also travelled around in the summer and it's not something I think I would recommend. Well, I've got myself at the crossroads and there's no signs. The only thing we've got is a bicycle track. So, if it's a bike track, maybe it means I'll be able to continue back walking along the canal.
as can be seen, the cycle routes are not in this direction. But I'm going to do it anyway. Ah, there we have a cycle route. Even this building, which looks so dilapidated and run down today, does hint that once it had a, a splendor. And then it was when it was built, nor do I know anything about it. And the canal is 200 meters to the left. And the postman has been following me more or less since I started. The restaurant here is offering eggs and asparagus and I'll get some of that when I come back with my vehicle. don't particularly want to walk around with a pile of eggs on me for obvious reasons. But when I come in the direction of Venice, I'll come down here. There we see a classic Airstream caravan. Airstream have started doing them again, looking the same. I've been able to say how old that one is, of course, but as it's got a television antenna up, I don't suppose it's particularly new. Looks much better than the, the caravan there. It's now coming into Dolo and for today's purposes Dolo is my destination. I think that's a fantastic view. The canals and there's a car park there. I'm gonna find out if we can leave campus in there. That looks a great spot. However, it, it looks too good to be true. I see lorries aren't allowed in. Uh -huh. 